Hi everyone, Simon Chappell here, and I'm so delighted to be joined by a very special guest, Janie Lee Grace from The Sober Club and from lots of other things. You've done all sorts, Janie. Um, thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you for inviting me. You're right. I do wear quite a lot of hats. <laughs> you do, yeah. You've got a big hat stand. <laughs> I have. And today we were going to talk about kind of wellness and things like nutrition and health in sobriety. I know when I quit drinking, I think I was so very focused on alcohol and learning about sobriety that health and diet probably weren't the first thing on my mind. So mm. I guess I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on that and obviously a bit about your story how you came to be doing this as well I know that's two questions in one so no, no, that's okay. um well I'll just tell you a little bit about my story first for anyone who hasn't sort of heard me say I do have a podcast alcohol free life so I I share my story a lot but for anyone who hasn't heard it I was um what you might call a typical gray area drinker so what I mean by that expression is, you know, I never had a rock bottom moment. I didn't ever end up in, um, you know, police cell. I didn't have a, a driving under influence. None of that stuff. I was functioning seemingly completely fine. Um, but whereas society kind of tells us there's two types of drinkers, there's those who are totally at rock bottom and there's everybody else who are perfectly fine. I wasn't. I was somewhere on the spectrum that we now know is grey area drinkers. Mm -hmm. And I was far from fine because I was definitely drinking too much and waking at 3am and absolutely hating myself. And it didn't fit with who I was because I've always been uh, well, for many, many years, really, really passionate about holistic health and well-being. I run a, a website, imperfectlynatural.com, where I make recommendations. And I'm kind of queen of natural living. I've written books yeah. on the topic. So it didn't, it just wasn't authentic with who I was. And yet nobody ever called me out on it. Well, of course not, because it's the societal norm. Um, but I knew something was wrong. So this went on for absolutely ages until I finally, uh, two and a half, coming up to two and a half years ago, um, saw the light and realized that something had to change and uh, and, and I, I quit the booze and for ages I actually didn't tell anyone so I, I did I, I, I did it all wrong I didn't get the connection I now tell people to get you know or any of that stuff yeah. um, but and and even I forgot my own stuff to start with I kind of became so as you were saying kind of focused on I must I must not drink I must quit the booze I must I must I must um, that I um, I kind of forgot everything I knew about holistic health and, and, and well-being well not everything but a lot of it um, now I look back I've done you know since then I've done lots of training I've, I've you know I'm trained as a coach and I've done a whole bunch of work around it and I can now see it so much more clearly and I recognize that along with everyone else, what I was doing was actually making it much harder for myself than it needed to be. Because you and I both know that the early stages of, of, of when, you, when you're ditching the booze, and by the way, I very usually rarely use the phrase give up because we're not giving anything up, right? Yeah, exactly. We're only gaining. So I, yeah, I'll keep using, that. yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll keep using this phrase, ditching the booze. And the early days, um, you know, and weeks can be really hard. They can be very hard emotionally um, because you're, and it's like a roller coaster of emotions. It certainly was for me. And it can be quite tricky physically because even after the initial craving has gone from your body, which is usually very quickly, um, you do still have all sorts of weird physical stuff going on. And you can find yourself craving sugar. Loads of people get the sugar head yeah. on, don't they? Become absolute sugar monsters. Um, and all kinds of weird digestive stuff can kick, kick off. So, you know, I now realize that I could have made it easier for myself. And part of the work that I try and do now with the Sober Club is help people to recognize that in those early days, weeks, months, even years, actually, if you see this as your time of recovery and really look after yourself well and remember that word self-care, you know, and put yourself first. Most of us, when we're drinking, we actually we think we're treating ourselves but actually of course we aren't we're just poisoning right. ourselves slowly and most of us are not really looking after ourselves very well at all when you when you ask people who've been drinking for years what they do for self-care they usually can't think of a thing you yeah know? and yet so it, it's interesting because once you ditch the booze when you start to get free of it 
your world starts to open up. And I've met so many people who for the first time are thinking, okay, right now I do need to think about my health. Is there something I can do to boost my health and well-being, to get my diet sorted? What about meditation and mindfulness and spirituality? What about exercise? What about finding my purpose? And it's just amazing because the whole world opens up to you. Um, but you do have to start with, with, okay, well, how can I look after myself then? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And it, it, my journey, although, like you said, I think those first few weeks where well, we both agreed that I was kind of just immersing myself like I was studying for some kind of exam on sobriety. <laughs> I, as time went by, my energy levels, my motivation came back. I definitely got way more into my fitness and joined a boot camp and made a load of new friends. I started meditating using some of the apps you know, like Calm app and things mm. like that. Um, my, I mean, I guess my diet, I was never a sort of junk food eater or anything like that, but I, I didn't really look too closely at that. So, I mean, if somebody came over to Sober Club or Imperfectly Natural, what – what would they be? Would it be someone who's perhaps a week sober or month sober? Like, wh where in the journey should someone be, and what would they expect to kind of get from it and learn from it? Well, I mean, within the sober club, what I do there is I, it, it doesn't matter if you're on day one or, or six years sober. We've got people literally both ends of the spectrum um, because what we're looking at within the sober club is, I mean, I do have an online course, Get the Buzz Without the Booze as included. So if you're on day one, I, you know, people work through that. But the real focus in the sober club is, OK, what's next? So it's right. absolutely let's get solid in our sobriety. But but we know that it's people who are really going to be interested in in the the holistic picture, health and yeah. they're not they're not just ditching the booze, they're ditching the booze and the whole world's opening up, you know. Yeah. So it's it's health and well being. And I mean, just to give you some examples of of of, of really simple things, actually, in the first few weeks of ditching the booze, so many people say to me, if I'm coaching somebody, they'll almost always say particularly women I'm not I'm not sure if it's quite so much the men but the women will say um, I really want to get sober and I'm desperate to lose a few stone or whatever you know yeah. and I, or I'm binge eating or I'm this or the other and my answer is almost always you know let's deal with the booze first let's deal with the booze you cannot focus on everything at once it's actually impossible it has to be the drinking that bit is non-negotiable but what's really amazing is if you really do focus on looking after yourself and treating you actually treating yourself well proper self-care you find that over time the whole weight issue becomes much more manageable often it sorts itself out of its own accord which is no, I could never have believed it if you told me yeah. but it actually does um, it's hard to tell someone that when they're struggling but you just have to trust me that at the beginning you know don't 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 rock up with a list of 15 things that you want to change all at once worry about ditching the booze first and everything else will follow ditching the booze and self-care so having said that, then, when you first stitch the booze, one of the most important things to do is eat. And the amount of people that forget that and they say to me, oh, I've ma I managed a week and then I, you know, it all tipped up and I, I, I ended up having a drink again. And I'll say, well, what happened before that? And it's almost always that they had a nightmare day at work or whatever, or they'd been had, had some kind of stress. They'd rocked up somewhere where they would normally drink. Um, and then everyone else was, was, you know, was, was on the booze. They had nothing prepped. And it, it's not rocket science to see what went on there. It ju they just went into automatic mode. Whereas if they'd been prepped, literally done their prep, and I know yeah. you do a lot about sober toolkits, you know, if they'd been prepped, that they'd have A, recognized that that's going to be a trigger point. You know, if it's Friday afternoon, you've had a terrible week at work or whatever, um, or online, uh, and then you, you rock to the pub and you haven't worked out what you're drinking, um, then those these things are going to come in. And often it's that thing of, actually, do you really, is it really that you're craving a drink or are you just hungry? You know, we know this phrase, don't we? Halt. Are yeah. you hungry? Are you angry? Are you lonely? Are you tired? And then f goes in there are you fearful you know hunger is a big one um because the, with our emotions are so linked aren't they to the, the to wanting food and when you've had a really crap day or even a good day 
so often we think, oh, wow. You know, I remember once in the early, very early, I might have only been ditched the booze a week or two weeks. I went and did um, a, an event that I only do once a year. And I was sort of teaching this this bunch of people and I only do this thing once a year. And it's a really, really big thing for me. And in other years, at the end of it, I would always go and celebrate with a, you know, glass of champagne or whatever. That was the association in my mind. So I had this hugely busy day. I hadn't even thought ahead to what was going to happen. I would do now, of course. Um, but so I finished this this day um, with a bunch of friends or whatever, uh, colleagues, sun's out, everyone's okay, straight to the, the uh, local wine bar, whatever it is for, for champagne. And I have this absolute feeling of panic. I mean, an actual craving. Well, I want that. You know, I'm, I'm only human and I've worked really hard and this is my treat. And, and this is, you know, all of these emotions. And yet I'd made my absolute commitment, even though I hadn't done the prep. But I came out and as I walked past the wherever they were going, I saw this stall selling salted caramel ice cream. And I thought, <laughs> wow, that'll do. <laughs> in, all, in all the years I'd been drinking, I'd never eaten a dessert. I mean, why, why would you? You just have more wine, don't you? Um, but I suddenly saw this salted caramel ice cream, which I hadn't had since I was a kid, I don't think. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to have that. And it totally hit the spot because actually the truth of it was I was hungry. My blood sugar level was a bit low, you know. And so once I'd had that, I was okay. Now, I'm not in that breath giving everyone license to just go and eat, you know, <laughs> all the pies. Yeah. You know, salted caramel ice cream actually isn't the answer to everything. In that instance, it was by it far the best choice for me, you know. Now, obviously, what I would do is I would prep ahead and I would make sure I take, you know, a fantastic alcohol-free drink or a or a smoothie or some kombucha and you know I'd have I'd have I'd have prepped but the point I'm trying to make is sometimes it's just that we're hungry and if you're trying to lose weight at the same time as you're trying to ditch the booze you're almost certainly going to come a cropper because most of us need to keep eating because our brain chemistry is all out of whack when you've been drinking for years the chances are when you stop you are going to be low in serotonin and GABA and dopamine, all these really important, um, you know, uh, brain chemicals that we need. And actually, when you're lacking in those chemicals, it makes you crave even more. It makes you anxious. It makes you yeah. irritable, all of those things. I was big time lacking in that stuff. And back then, I didn't I didn't realize. I mean, fortunately, my diet was, apart from the, the odd ice cream, the odd ice cream. My, my diet was, was, was really good. So I, I, I was able to once I realized what was going on, I was able to remember my own shtick and kind of get back into it. But at the beginning, I think a lot of people really forget that. So I'll say to somebody who's, you know, been sober for a couple of weeks, tell me about your diet, you know, and they'll say, oh, I'm, I'm trying to lose weight. So I skip lunch and then I have a couple of days where I'm fasting and then I, I, I try and stick to just a, you know, just um, a, a, a small ready meal in the evening or I just, what? No, it's absolutely no way you can do that when you're trying to ditch the booze. Have three decent meals and prep what you're going to have and make sure you eat real food because that's your best chance of getting in those nutrients that you need so that you can replace some of that serotonin and dopamine. You find okay. those things in real food as well as other stuff. That's so true. And it's a little bit like when you, you know, you're, you start personal training or really taking your fitness seriously. Yeah, you know, they say fifty percent of personal training is in the kitchen, and it's kind of similar. You know, you are training, you're you're building up your you know, new muscle, albeit mm -hmm. some of it's memory muscle and in, in your mind. And and you're right. You know what you eat, even with uh, funny. This is so funny. There's two things you said there that I've talked to people about in the last couple of days. One of them was ice cream, <laughs> and uh, because one of my clients that I coach with has developed a, a an ice cream habit with Ben and Jerry's and I pointed out because so's my teenage son he's got the same problem I I've been seeing these low calorie ice creams in the supermarkets and they're in the same sort of style tubs but they're massively less calories and don't taste that different so there are sort of sugar switch outs you can do and things like that if you still want those treats and I agree with you you know just trying to do everything all in one go is a recipe for disaster, if you mm. pardon the cooking pun. Mm. And mm -hmm. a client I was speaking to yeah, a couple of days ago, they were telling me how 
when they eat, they just don't fancy drinking. And they'd never really made the link before. And they've mm. started cooking their dinner earlier in the day. And yeah, it's absolutely. Really well, I think I think the thing to focus on, is, as you do with anything, I mean, if you are, if we do talk about a diet just for a moment, if were you to be going on a diet because you need to lose weight, then that's something you can think about much later down the line. But yeah. if you are on a diet, most people recognize that diets per se don't really work because you just end up putting it all back and feeling miserable. So trying to just deprive yourself doesn't, doesn't work. What can work is if you focus on what you're putting in rather than what you're not having. So you're focusing on what you're gaining and exactly the same thing applies. So rather than spending your whole time thinking, oh, I can't have, I really want my wine or my drink, but I can't have it or I can't have it. Don't focus on what you can't have. Focus on what you can have. And what you can have is fantastic nutrient dense food and amazing drinks that actually support your recovery. So often I'll recommend that people try juicing, even if you don't normally have fresh juices. Fresh juices and smoothies, I mean, it's a fantastic way of getting getting really good nutrition straight to your cells. I'm not saying yeah. instead of, I'm not saying necessarily um, do a full juice detox. I mean, you can do that, but may not be the right time in the first few a few um, days unless you're lucky enough to be on a retreat somewhere in which case that's fine but if you're trying to do all of this and live your regular life I'm just saying add it in so if you were to add in a juice you know something like let's say um, you know, if you've got a juicer or a juicer and a blender even better but if you've got a juicer and you get a piece of um, uh, half an apple um, a chunk of fresh ginger and uh, a half a lemon say for example peeled shove that through the juicer there's your ginger shot okay now that is sensational it's fantastic for your immunity absolutely amazing because you know ginger's infla um, anti-inflammatory and it's right, yeah. super super good for your immunity so you knock that back by the way if you ever have a cold uh, sore throat or a cold coming on wow gin ginger shots are amazing so you knock that back i defy anybody to want to drink a glass of wine after that yeah. what, what? <laughs> No, it, you feel like you've been plugged in. Like you, your whole body knows instantly. Okay, okay, that now that is good for me. That's good for me, and I feel great. And then if you make a full juice, you know, a green juice, what you're doing is you're focusing on the recovery. You're focusing on getting the really good stuff in, and that's your best chance of boosting your well-being, getting in the brain chemistry stuff, and nobody but nobody fancies alcohol after a dirty great green juice. That's so true. That, it's absolutely true. You, yeah, you've had a big pint of it or whatever. <laughs> exactly. you, you're not going to want to drink wine after no. that. That's <laughs> amazing tips there that I think a lot of people will really find some help in. And and when they uh, you you know come to your website, this is all stuff that you kind of coach people on, or they go for yeah. a course. Yeah. So on on I mean if if someone comes in along to the sober club there's lots of free blogs and competitions and various things and then we have a membership and people can sign up and be a member and, and within the membership there's an online course as I say get the buzz without the booze so we go through a whole bunch of stuff the the whole um psychology angle really everything and there's a big section on nutrition and sugar as I'm sure you can imagine yeah um but then also within the membership portal I've got it there's I mean literally there's everything there's nutrition there's mindset there's relationships there's absolutely everything um and um and inc including and actually we've got a juice shot challenge which is quite fun um and and a lot of people have been through that and um and just found it's transformed the way they live because they've just wow. found that by starting their morning with a just just a shot doesn't even have to be a full glass because not everybody wants to do the big old glass of juice thing but just a shot you know and there's a bunch of different shots you can you can do it's transformed how they live yeah <laughs> I mean literally transforms everything because I mean you know you mentioned a t t teenagers you know I've got I've got three of them and trying to get good food into teenagers sometimes it's like pushing treacle uphill right it really is. and 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 so with certainly with my son I I, I realized you know that I, we, he was going through a phase where I, I just couldn't get him to eat anything decent. So I said, okay, let's just at least do this. So he has um, usually a, probably a ginger shot or a, a turmeric shot every day and a green juice. Well, so at the very, if he gets nothing else, at least he's had more than his five portions of fruit and veg. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. So that's a start, you know, and that, and I really think it's like your health insurance in a glass, you know, um, and, and, and as I say, the beauty of it is it, keeps you well it, it really gives you that kind of boost straight to the cells um but at the same time it stops you fancying alcohol Joe, i wish i'd known all this before i quit i think it would have been so much easier yeah i mean i do i, I think i mean i didn't i didn't I, I did know it but i didn't put it into place so many of us don't equate ditching the booze with getting healthy and yet actually the two should go hand in hand Absolutely yeah. hand in hand. Yes, give yourself a bit of a break. You know, you get the sugar head on. I get that. Although, you know, there are healthier swaps and, you know, have the have the really, really dark chocolate is great. You know, high percentage cacao chocolate is fantastic. Have a couple of squares of that when you're craving or, you know, stick a uh, date in the freezer because then when you it comes out of the freezer, it's a bit like a luxury chocolate. I mean, it's yeah. still sugar, but, um, you know, it's going to be better for you than 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 cracking on with the uh, kind of, you know, chocolate regular confectionery all the time. Um, but so, yeah, I wish I had kind of remembered as well, because I actually made it harder for myself. And it was I was on about week three before I rang my own, the nutritionist that I go to and told her what was going on. And she said, oh, for God's sake, have you, have you actually forgotten everything? <laughs> God, actually, I have. I have. You're absolutely right. I have forgotten everything. I'd even forgotten to drink water because when I was boozing, I used to have, I was really religious about being, oh, so healthy, you know, a glass of wine for every glass, a glass of water for every glass of wine. Oh, how great am I? Um, you know, I mean, thank God it would have, could, could have been a lot worse. But once I stopped drinking, I forgot to drink the water. I forgot to drink the extra water, <laughs> but of course we need it. And really simple things like that, really, really making sure you're properly hydrated. I know these stuff, this stuff is so simple, but you'd be amazed how many people forget. Oh, it's so true. And you, yeah, you just overlook the basics. Mm. And that took me a while. And now I, I have this bottle with me. Yeah, keep it. I'll get through two or three of those a day. But you're right. I, now thinking back, I wasn't doing that mm. anywhere near as much as I should have been. It's yeah. just so true. And I often put one of those infusion sort of tea bags in it. That Yeah, yeah, yeah herb, herb nice teas. Flavor. Absolutely. And, and I mean, you know, you can, I think once you start to kind of realise that this isn't about giving something up, as we've already stressed, yeah. this is about becoming a whole new you <laughs> you know this yeah. this you know living your best life without the booze that's kind of one of the strap lines i use all the time because you literally can transform so many areas of your life it's quite incredible and i've seen it happen time after time with people in the sober club who start and they're really kind of they're really down that well no wonder you know alcohol brings you down it's such a depressant they're so anxious they're like little timid little mice and and there's no joy in their life and they're eating you know okay but they're massively overweight they're lethargic they're not doing any exercise they're not doing any kind of meditation they hate their job they i mean it's, it's it's a massive great list of everything that seems impossible and and what we say is, OK, well, let's just focus on the one thing. <laughs> let's just focus yeah. on, you know, getting you well, you know, you, self-care. That might mean saying no sometimes, you know, might actually mean saying no. Um, but when you do focus on what's actually good for you and you start to listen, then you, you your body will tell you, you will know. Sure. And, and yet, having said that, there'll be people who say, yeah, but then I had a moment where I just thought, sod it, and I ate, you know, a cupboard full of chocolate. Okay, it's fine. But the next day, you know, let's get back to some decent food and let's have a nice big green juice and we're back on track. <laughs> But it's the not drinking that is non-negotiable. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's it's interesting because Annie Grace in her book and in the alcohol experiment, she talks about the big domino, you know, the one thing that if you push it over, all yeah. the other dominoes in your life sort of fall over, fall into place, so to speak. Yeah, to and totally. It's exactly what you're saying. Yeah, interestingly, I, what I was going to say, I went off on a tangent with myself, but I was going to say, you see these people who – who are, you know, they rock up and there's all of this stuff going on. And and I've seen it time after time, and I'm sure you have with your community, you know, three months later, two months later, three, four, 
oh my god it's like you're talking to a totally different yeah. person i mean they've transformed the way they look they're eating you know they're growing their own food sometimes eating fresh food they've started a new career or they've they've written a book or they've you know they they suddenly they've got an allotment of, it's incredible yeah. Everything has changed. They're meditating daily. They're, it's, it's, it's absolutely, the, the transformations are literally incredible. Yeah. Literally I, incredible. The lady I was speaking to literally today, you know, from you know, a couple of months into her sober journey, and it's exactly what you just described. You know, and at the start, it was scary. It was full of fear, not sure, thinking alcohol might be the solution during the cravings. But now it's like watching a, a flower that's bloomed. And just, yeah. The transformation is just unbelievable. You yeah. um, Meditation, you mentioned meditation, and mm. that was something that was actually quite big for me. And I'd never hugely got into it until around the time I quit. And mm. I'd read a lot about it and thought, no, I'm going to take this part seriously. So I did kind of do one of the things that you suggest. <laughs> and it, it really did help me. I was able to empty my mind when there was a lot of things going on, or at least learn to sit with some uncomfortable thoughts what I know what your view on meditation is in that it really helps but how often do you think people should be meditating what tools do you, know, do you recommend apps or is there something you offer around meditation well this is a really interesting one for me because I for many years I've you know I'm a Hay House author so for many years I've been interviewing um, and I obviously uh, had a series on uh, Hay House Radio so I've interviewed just about every guru um, there is and so there isn't anything that I don't know about meditation but if you ask me if I used to do it the answer is no don't be so dumb of course I don't I've got 20 minutes to hang about you know and and whenever I did try to meditate um because obviously I was talking about it with the whole god on time I thought I must I must try so I tried numerous times and my perception was well it doesn't work for me I'm just getting a shopping list coming in and to my brain I can't be still I've just you know I go through everything and then I go oh God, I've just spent 20 minutes working out the, the list for the school, whatever it is, fate, you know, the, the, for the kids. It's like a total waste of time. So um, so I had years and years and years while I was drinking of a of, of feeling that that was for someone else, not for me, even though I knew the theory. Um, and what was really interesting was I, once I ditched the booze, it was only then that I could start to well, I, I can't find a non-woo-woo way of saying this. It just is what it is. Be I, could then, no. I could then start to love myself. I couldn't before. I just couldn't before. I didn't think I was worth it before. I didn't think I was worth the time. Of course, it works for everyone else to go within and and be, you know, uh, uh, but I I actually just didn't think I was worth that. You know, I was way too frantic and busy and 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 there was that missing piece that yeah. lack, that not being authentic that was stopping me from actually really being able to look within. How could I look within when the, it, there was a massive, dirty, great big elephant in the goddamn room? Yeah, of right. I couldn't look within. And it was so fascinating for me. It was fascinating that to find that I naturally was able to just be at peace for a few minutes because ultimately I don't think you have to sit cross-legged for 20 minutes if you no. can that's fantastic but I started by just setting a timer for five minutes just five minutes on my phone because for god's sake anyone can do that and I accepted that within those five minutes uh, thoughts might come in yeah they might you know, they might just like thoughts of alcohol come in at the beginning, but it doesn't mean you have to do anything about it. They're right. just thoughts, right? They're just thoughts. So I, I was able to accept that. So I started with five minutes and then the five minutes became 10. And then I also took, you know, started doing walking meditations where I didn't have a phone or a podcast or whatever, but I would just walk and I would just look around. I suppose that's mindfulness. I just became much more aware and much more sort of at peace. And then I listened to, um, uh, guided visualizations as well. Um, so it it happened sort of organically for me because once I ditched the booze, I was able to be open to it. That's really all it was. It was just being able to be open to it. And I now really genuinely believe that that meditation, mindfulness is whatever works for you. 
but there needs to be something. <laughs> there needs to be something yeah. where you pause, where you have a little routine of whatever it might be, and where you do something that is reflective or going within, you know, not without. So preferably first thing in the morning, you know, it's great because I think it's a real danger of, of waking up and then going straight to your phone. So you're you're dealing with the outer world before you've dealt with the inner world. Yeah, you that's know? true. So I think morning's fantastic, but ultimately it doesn't really matter, you know. And it, within the sober club, we've got a whole bunch of um, of guided visualizations and various little meditations um, that 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 people can do. But it really is whatever works for you. Um, so you know, I've really been there, done it, got the t-shirt with, with that one. So nobody can say to me, oh, meditation's not for me because I, I got the answer to that one. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, no, ditch the booze and then you might find it is. <laughs> yeah, I think actually now you said that, that's, that is what happened to me. It was, I ditched the booze and then I started to really, I was like you at the start, you know, shopping lists mm -hmm. and things whizzing through my head. And then I, I became much more open to it and open-minded and I actually can say I enjoy it. You know, yeah. I, I really like doing it. Yeah. I use the Calm app. Some people use Headspace. Yeah. There's a bunch yeah. of them. I prefer the guided ones. Mm, yeah, I do. I, I do too. Although I try and do a bit of a mix, but you know, again, it, it it really doesn't matter. I mean, I think the other thing that that to remember is that meditation, you know, the word, as it were, can mean so many things. So mm -hmm. journaling, for example, is something that you know, again, I used to do off and on, but I'm now I I now focus much more on it, and I really really recommend it. And that is literally just writing down your thoughts, and that's a form of meditation because I'm not talking about writing a blog or a book or anything that's going to be edited. This is stream of consciousness stuff. And if you do that first thing in the morning, this is um, Julia Cameron is the queen of this. She wrote a book called The Artist's Way. So anyone who knows that book will know that what I'm talking about is called writing morning pages. That's the term. And you write at least three pages, preferably of full scat. Handwriting, I mean, remember that, you know, from the oh, old yeah. days. Um, but actually, there's something about handwriting because it really uses the cognitive brain in a different way to typing. So, you know, you get your old style pen. And my one of my top tips for the sober toolkit is treat yourself to a really nice notebook and, and pen um, and write three um, pages of stream of consciousness stuff. So it might be, you know, I'm really fed up or I forgot to send someone a birthday card or who knows what it is doesn't matter because you won't need to edit it you don't necessarily have to even look at it again although it's very interesting when you do I can tell you um, but you're not writing it for anyone you are and you're not even writing it for yourself you are just getting your thoughts out and that is kind of a, a, a meditation because it's really interesting you know that theory of better out than in right and yeah. if you let all that come out um, you feel it's very interesting how you feel. Very interesting that's, how it affects your day. Yeah, that's it's really interesting because another client I work with, we were doing some uh, some coaching around becoming aware of feelings and not letting emotions, you know, not reacting to thoughts and letting emotions come up. And uh, I actually got her to get a piece of paper and a little one of those golf pencils that you use with the scorecard, so she could keep it on her. This is when we were allowed to go out and. She just kept a tally every time she felt a negative emotion or a positive emotion. And then I said to next to each one, just write one word, sad, mm. joy, whatever it might be. Yeah. Uh, and it really helped her like focus in on that feeling in that moment. And it's mm. kind of what you're saying is kind of because I haven't actually heard of that you know, mm. stream of consciousness. Stream of consciousness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, so it's a similar sort of thing while you're out and about. So. Yeah, definitely. And then the other thing that I'd really recommend while we're talking about writing is, is to write a gratitude list. And again, many yeah. people know about that now. But when you're in those early days of sobriety, it's really important, I think, to write that, you know, at least 10 things you're grateful for. And, and I think, you know, you, you need to be specific there as well. So particularly at this, at this time, you know, we all need to be doing this because, um, you know, it's not just why well, I'm grateful that I've got home to live in or I'm grateful that I've got a family because you'll end up writing the same thing every yeah. single night. So write, you know, three things in detail and it might be something really, really tiny. You know, I'm grateful that the, the person I, you know, passed on my whatever it is, lockdown walk, the, you know, social distancing walk today smiled at me and, you know, 
had a really whatever it doesn't matter what it is um but actual detail because the little things can just help remind us of the good stuff because thoughts um you know as you know you do this i know in your training but our thoughts create our feelings you know and from the feelings it's what we do isn't it so when we notice the thoughts even the little things it makes it really makes a difference and when you're drinking you don't notice your thoughts no at all if if a thought comes in it, you know the thought is i crave a drink okay i'll have a drink end off <laughs> yes it's so true and uh, yeah I, I and i think so many people will get some really great inspiration from some of the things you've been saying there because it's things that come up time and time again and often the answer is staring you in the face mm. and this just absolutely complements what you do you know this isn't just about putting down the bottle and that's the end of it it's a journey of self-discovery growth mm. and and positive change and yeah like i said yeah. i wish i'd known some of this stuff before because it's me just too. awesome me too what, <laughs> So are there any other, maybe a couple more sort of general wellness tips that you give to people? See, we touched on meditation, diet. Mm. Um, what are... I mean, I think, um, I mean, there's so many, you know, I could go on forever. But, you know, I mean, one of the things that I, I talk about is um, boosting immunity and the importance of kind of boosting your, and particularly right now, I mean, it's critical, yeah. isn't it? But, but I think, taking responsibility for your own health and well-being is actually everything you know whether you eat whether you're drinking or not it, you take responsibility for what you put into your body um there's not much that we can control that's certainly how it feels right now but we can control what we eat and we can control what we put on our skin you know that's something i'm really really passionate about not using chemicals on your skin um we can control what's in our personal space how we clean our home um cleaning your home without chemicals you know there's a thing i mean we forget what a toxic load it is when we've got um you know we're swimming in a kind of toxic soup with all the stuff that's going on and again you know alcohol in products and god knows what and you just start to often get more of a sense of oh okay i'm going to really protect this 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 body of mine, you know, this body and mind, the body mind connection. So I find it amazing just just how many repercussions there are of, of ditching the booze. And, and obviously, everything is interconnected, this holistic picture that I talk about. When you've got less chemicals flying around your home, um, you know, your skin looks better, you radiate, you become healthier, you sleep better. Um, you know, sleep's another big thing, of course, that um, that's plays a very big part in it, in it all. So I suppose it, it, what I'm really trying to say is that my, my take on holistic living, you know, which is that we can all do these little bits, not necessarily all at once and don't overwhelm yourself if you're thinking, oh God, I'm not doing that. Um, it's that, it's the small change, big difference approach. And so often when people ditch the booze, that's when they start to think differently. They start to think, okay, um, I will I will look at the holistic picture. That's that's really the beauty of it all. Yeah, that's so true. And I even read something actually recently about how the mundane jobs, the hoovering, all these things, they can actually become like your recovery tools to keep you focused, give you structure, something you can immerse yourself in. As, and as ridiculous as it sort of sounded at first, I thought actually there is some logic in just kind of immersing you, you know, even sometimes people might just wallow in bed and think, oh, mm. I'm just going to lay here. I don't feel so great. Or if you know, you get up and get moving and get that routine going on. And as you quit, as the days go by, you just feel better and better and better. Mm. So Janie, it's been so amazing having you on. I, even I've learned so much. Mm -hmm. and tell me, um, where can people, obviously I'll put the Sober Club website on the screen, but where can people connect with you and find out more? Because I'm sure loads of people are going to be interested in, in discovering. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm really easy to find. It's just at Janie Lee Grace on Instagram and at Janie Lee Grace Loves on Facebook. And there's a, a, a free group on Facebook called Imperfectly Natural Self-Care, uh, if anybody wants to join that. And then obviously, if you come to the soberclub.com, there's lots of blog posts and stuff there and info as to how you can join. And of course, you must listen to the podcast. You were one of my guests. Thank yeah, you so yeah, much. Yeah, Alcohol Free Life podcast. That's my labor of love. I absolutely love doing that because I'm so lucky to have some awesome guests and um, and it's brilliant to be able to share, you know, these incredible experts and quick little authors like yourself, you know, with um, with so many people. So yeah, I absolutely love doing this work and, and, and I love the fact that um, 
I love seeing people grow and evolve. You know, they start off and at the beginning, all that they're thinking about is, you know, um, I'm drinking too much. And then over time, everything changes. That lovely phrase, alcohol steals your joy and being sober yeah. makes you brave. And it really, really does. It's so true. Thank you again so Thank much. You. You've been an amazing guest. I'm so it's wonderful. And yeah, if you want to connect with Janie, definitely check out some of her videos, some of the talks she's done, books, you name it. Janie's done it. So thanks again. Thank you.